So welcome everyone for another real talk session. Today we have KSD Moskau's Felix Moskau, who is a product and product manager for the company. And today we will talk about the uh, projects of the uh, KSD Moskau. And of course, we will first get to know what they do. They have a state-of-the-art innovation center in Germany, and they will talk about their offerings. And then we will dig into the non-broadcast projects that the company recently successfully concluded, which are very interesting. And I hope you will stay tuned. And Felix is actually connecting us through their virtual studio. So I will stop our screen share and show him to you. Yeah. Hi, Felix, how are you? Hi, everyone. Well, I'm fine. Joining us today. Yeah, as we can see, uh, yeah, you're welcome. As we can see, I'm actually in a reality powered virtual studio and that we are web stream. Yes, and you get to actually perform some of the things you are telling us today. Am I right? Yeah. Great. Uh, okay, so, awesome. yeah. <laughs> so let's uh, continue then with the, with what you do at KSD Moscow. Can you tell us about your facilities? Yeah, so basically um, we as uh, KST, we are, uh, let's say in general, uh, a usual system integrator. So we do projects for broadcast uh, media technologies and also security technologies. Um, the company exists since 35 years. So uh, it's uh, actually a generation family business. Yeah. Um, besides the, the pure business as a system integrator, we are also a manufacturer for hard and software solutions, uh, which means uh, robotic, uh, robotics, but also um, furniture for uh, control rooms and uh, outdoor housings for cameras. We manufacture the outdoor housings for the Panasonic PTZs, for example. Um, yeah, so our focus is to build a solution from A to Z for customer. So the uh, perfect situation for us is if the customer comes and tells us, hey, here, there's a green field, that's our property, I want to have a studio there. And then we will plan and do the whole thing, including construction, including uh, integration, including play out and everything. We also have the KSD Academy which is in, uh, a combination of uh, training rooms where we train our workflow and also the workflows of our partners. And then um, last, uh, lastly, we have the KSD Innovation Center, which was just newly founded two years ago. And this is a large uh, broadcast demo and research and development center. So let's dig in a little bit more to the Innovation Center. You actually have a fully equipped studio there, which you are presenting to us today, right? Actually, I'm in the innovation center at the moment in the, uh, in the green screen application. Um, yeah, so the, the, uh, the innovation center is a demo research and development center for broadcast technologies. So we try to uh, invent new workflows and new ways to use the newest technology. Uh, yeah, it's 400 square meters of, of uh, studio. Um, in here, we try to combine uh, all the major players in the market. Yeah, our partners are Panasonic, uh, Zero Density, of course, but also Avid, Blacktrax, Crestron, Gunther Mann and Drunk, Ari, and so on. So uh, the, the idea is that here, uh, the manufacturers also um, have the possibility to do shootouts and to prove themselves and their solutions uh, against each other in the integrated workflow. Yeah, the focus is uh, on virtual reality and automation. So basically we have our own uh, studio automation system in the development, which is called Cambot. And uh, we try to uh, find ways for the newest uh, virtual reality applications. A little bit about the history. Actually, how, how did the Innovation Center start? Um, it all started when uh, we built a temporary little virtual studio in one of our training rooms for our customer. Um, 
the project uh, was successful in the end. They bought the solution, but uh, it came up that we can't do that much work to build a whole virtual studio just for one demo. So uh, then we decided uh, to build a whole new studio, which is just there for demonstration and research. Um, in 2017, we started to work with zero density and uh, also started the construction of the actual building. So the innovation center is a whole new building actually. Yeah, in 2018 then we started with the first, uh, with the first demonstrations and uh, of course also innovations because we really do research here. And uh, then in uh, Q1 last year, we started with the official demonstrations. Yeah, and uh, here we see a little bit uh, of uh, pictures of the past. So basically what we see here, this, uh, the slide before, this was the little um, temporarily virtual studio which we built just for this one customer. Um, it was working quite well, but uh, too much work for just one demonstration. And uh, what we see here, this is the control room of the innovation center during a demo. So basically this is uh, the state of the innovation center now. So, uh, Felix, before meeting Zero Density, before meeting our team, you used another virtual studio technology. Yeah. What made you switch to another one? Um, yeah, so basically uh, we uh, started to work with uh, all the usual known faces in the market. Um, what made us switch? Um, yeah, basically um, we saw the solution of zero density, we saw the Unreal workflow and uh, uh, the uh, output of it. Here in the background we see a little video of our virtual set and um, this uh, brought us to the decision that this is the only future-proof way. So the visuals you have uh, working with Unreal Engine and also the, the workflow we have with the solution from zero density and of course the very good Kia uh, made us um, yeah, immediately switch to zero density. With your words, I of course understand your experience with Reality Engine is good, but uh, let me ask how long did it take you to make, make the switch? You learned the tool, you implemented, you installed and you start the project. How long was this period? Well, actually, um, it was uh, quite long because uh, we started uh, to work with zero density in 2017, but we did the first projects in the end of 2018. But this is only because we ourselves wanted to uh, get really used to this workflow because we try to ensure that we have the really, really best possible solution for our customer. So, uh, but to actually learn to use zero density took us just days and that's it because it's really simple to use. And then after the first demonstrations, uh, all, the, all the customers, yeah, we are really amazed by the result. Great, so let's get back to the innovation center. Can you tell us something more about the facilities? How many studios do you have? What is the technology there? Yeah, so um, actually um, we built three studios in here. Um, of course, first of all, we have to, uh, yeah, we see in the video in the background a little, little video about the construction actually. So the construction of the building itself was a challenge already because it was built on top of our existing building. And um, yeah, so maybe it, shows the facilities later in this video, but okay. Um, so we have a large state-of-the-art control room. We have uh, Studio A, which is a large, uh, let's say, uh, conventional studio. So basically there we have a large studio with latest camera technology and background projection. Um, of course, uh, the conventional way is to just display some two-dimensional content on there, but the uh, new way is to actually do a portal production in there. So basically what we do is uh, we put the virtual background from reality on the background of this production. And uh, using it that way, we, uh, we have real-time parallax and uh, we don't need to make a key because we are standing in front of the projection actually. And uh, so we don't need green. Yeah, the next studio is uh, Studio B. This is where I'm actually standing in. Um, yeah, I'm, st I'm standing in Studio B, which is the green screen studio. So basically here we have a, a fairly uh, medium sized uh, green screen uh, to do virtual studio. 
In here, we tried to find a new way to do lighting, actually. So instead of using uh, really expensive lights, we tried to find a way uh, to reduce costs. Uh, because actually, for the zero density Kia, we don't want to change light. We just had to find one set of light with the perfect temperature, with the perfect intensity, and that's it. So yeah, here we can see the lighting. Uh, this is actually so where I'm standing at the moment. And the video is currently uh, showcasing Studio yeah, B. exactly. So there we can see some nice shots of our robotics. This is uh, also part of our product of Camwatt. So basically I'm filmed by a robot now, which I can move around. So that's Studio B. Uh, in Studio, uh, Studio C, we uh, have a large video wall, which we use for also for portal function. But uh, actually it's planned to have a, uh, have a hybrid studio there later. But the implementation is not done yet. So basically there we will, we will shift the border between reality or between the real world and uh, the virtual world. So uh, yeah, and basically that's it for the, for the areas of the innovation center. Yeah. So thank you for that. So these are the areas, the studios you have. You have three very well equipped studio for different uh, usage. What about the technology? Of course, you have Ezra Dansky's Realty Engine, um, but what else is there? Over the whole area of the Innovation Center, we have uh, black tracks coverage. So basically, uh, we have a very large uh, black track system here. So I'm able to do talent tracking in the whole area. Um, also, uh, we have our own product, the KST CamBot system, which is a software for automation. Uh, with CamBot, we also control the light and also our robotics. So it's all in one system. Um, for camera sites, uh, we, uh, as we are a Panasonic partner, we have the Viricam for Life application here. So we have the finest quality cameras available. We have the CamBot robotics and uh, also the PTZ range of Panasonic. Mainly, of course, the UV150, which does the tracking for virtual reality. Um, yeah, as we know, virtual technology powered by reality engine. Um, uh, interesting also over the whole conventional area, we have the DMX adjustable light, which is also controlled by CamBot. So we can, in combination with the move of the cameras and uh, actions in the virtual reality, also control the light set at the same time. Um, yeah, so here we see a little picture of the, of the control room. This is a picture of uh, Studio B where I'm standing. I'm actually filmed by uh, this, this very robot on the rail we see there. This is Studio A with the big projection in the background. Here we can see the, the Viacam for Live application and also a dolly system for the UE150, which is also tracked. So basically we provide an additional axis of movement for the PTZ cameras also. Before moving on to the CamBot system, there is a question and I think it's relevant to ask here. Okay. So the wall of the green box was covered with green carpet. Would you say that there is an advantage of a carpet fabric compared to green painted color? No. What is the difference? Uh, so actually what we saw, the, the, uh, the walls of carpet, this was our first, let's say, try for virtual reality with our temporarily uh, virtual studio in one of our training rooms. And uh, we got, uh, from, the, from the industry, we got the advice to use green carpet. Um, it was, was working fine, uh, but um, depending on how close you are to the walls, you can get artifacts by the, by the texture, by the structure of the of the carpet especially with with uh, difference key uh, so this is why we decided for the final installation here in our studio b to use the actually the real green paint from zero density uh, actually we tried over 10 paints from different manufacturers and this was the best so far so um, so i i would uh, i would advise to not use carpet and to use the paint actually okay thank you for your actually insight on this let me specify a point there. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our audience wouldn't know about Real Green. Uh, it's basically not a full range product. This is a this is a byproduct of our R and D research and development efforts to get the best result in a virtual studio application. So our R and D team has uh, how to say this experimented, 
on certain set of green colors and they i think they found the best version and we've been sending it to some of our customers and partners to test it to see it and i think from your experience it's okay <laughs> yeah it's it's perfect i, I can confirm it we have a really really good result with it in the key as you okay. can see good to hear this also became a, a feedback session that's great so let's move on to the cambot system that you're um, product manager of so basically uh, Cambot is our uh, one of our products uh, and it is designed to be the core of the studio. As I said, uh, one of the targets of the innovation center is to find new ways and new workflows, uh, but also automation. So uh, our idea was to find or to uh, create one product to combine everything and to control everything from. Um, so uh, in the first instance, we can use Cambot as a software to control robotic arms and cameras. This is actually, uh, actually what happens here now. So Cambot is uh, controlling the Panasonic PTZs, the robotic arms, the matching of the cameras, the rail, uh, and is combining everything in one interface. Uh, and it also offers us the possibility to do timeline-based moves with it. So basically, uh, uh, I can program or record a move with the robot and replay it uh, as often as I want it and have a keyframe editor for it. Another benefit of, um, of Cambot is that it uh, outputs tracking data for the robots. So uh, every robotic system we can control uh, and which is precise enough, uh, we can, uh, as we do the kinematics, uh, calculate the tracking data and output it to uh, the reality engine. So basically we don't need any external tracking or whatsoever to do the tracking of the cameras. Yeah, here's, here we see a little picture of the, of the software interface, actually. Yeah, here we see the, the uh, closer picture of the timeline-based editor. So basically, in this timeline, I can adjust my moves with keyframes for every axis, including pan, tilt, zoom, focus, X, Y, Z of the camera and everything. Um, and also, as you can see in the... Uh, yeah, and here you can see uh, this was actually made during... Uh, promo video shooting for, for the product. Um, so basically this is the, con the one control station we need to control the whole studio. So basically from there I'm able, uh, as we currently develop an integration with Zero Density, uh, from there I'm able to trigger actions in reality, from there I'm able to move virtual cameras or augmented objects, but from there I'm also able to move the cameras or control the light. So this is one station to control everything. Would you like to demonstrate it? Yeah, how can I? Wait a second. Uh, I, the problem is currently I'm not at the station, so I have only the software here. So, uh, but for example, um, I can make the camera move. So this is the camera on the rail currently. Uh, I can switch to another camera. So basically what I do now is I route the picture around. Uh, I can make this camera move. Um, I have uh, unfortunately no graphic objects prepared at the moment, no augmented objects, but uh, the same way I move the cameras around, uh, I would also be able to move augmented objects around and so on. Um, yeah. As I explained already, we have no adjustable lights in our Studio B, in our green area here, because for the key we need fixed light, but uh, in the more conventional areas of the studio, I would also be able to control the spotlight or control the color of the light and so on. And it's all happening from one, from one interface. Thank you, Felix, for the, well, still very effective demonstration, if you ask me. But let's get to the, um, now it's time to move on to the main, actually, reason of why we gathered today, why we have yeah. this session. We had many, actually numerous uh, guests talking about broadcast related projects. So this week we wanted to give you an alternative look. So how does different industries, different corporations uh, want from this virtual studio technology and to give you an idea how to utilize it to the best of your interest. So we have three examples today from KSD. Uh, one is the Panasonic boot in IBC 2019. Of course, Panasonic related to broadcast industry, but this event is for an exhibition. It's a product launch and it's in nature. It's not entirely broadcast. 
And there is a Bundeswehr virtual studio and RVE virtual studio, in the, which is an energy company in Europe. So I will give the word to Felix to give us information about these projects. Yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, let's uh, first of all talk a little bit about the Panasonic booth on IBC. Uh, I'm sure people uh, or viewers uh, which have been to IBC have noticed the booth because uh, in my opinion it was one of the booths with the let's say best virtual graphics uh, shown on the exhibition uh, but we had quite a few challenges there for example uh, on the booth actually we had just a very very small green area just one by two meters so uh, it was really a challenge for the key yeah uh, but it worked yeah uh, because uh, of course in this very small area we had no possibility to have optimal lighting and so on and we had very very strong spill because the walls were very close yeah um, basically uh, also there we showcased uh, our product CamBot so basically the cameras were controlled by CamBot we had a robot there and we also showed the application with the UE150 the small Panasonic PTZ um, Another interesting topic, um, we had interactivity with black tracks tracking. So uh, basically uh, also on the booth we had a black track system. Um, and uh, oh, uh, as we see this picture, a little interesting game. Uh, people can guess uh, what inside this picture is real and what not. Because uh, this is a challenge uh, which we also give the, the people very often. So you can write in the chat real quick what you think is real or not and maybe in the end we give a little uh, a little salvation for it let me let me prepare the question real quick actually <laughs> <laughs> okay you, you talk a bit about this hologram and i will yeah. get you with the poll okay so um so basically um we had black tracks tracking on the booth and we used this uh, for two things uh, first of all, as she, the talent, was tracked by black tracks, our cameras were able to automatically follow her. Uh, but we also used it for the graphics in zero density. Uh, as you can see, yeah, she has this, uh, this little thing on her hand wrist, which looks like a watch. This is actually a tracker from, uh, from black tracks. So we had the position of her hand. And basically what we did, uh, she was presenting the new camera product and then had a hologram appearing on her hand and as she moved her hand around even behind her her head uh, the camera was uh, or the, the, the augmented object was following her exactly placed on her hand so this was a really great showcase of uh, of interactivity okay i'm almost ready but i need help on what you call this a switcher actually what do you what? mean the keyboard type thing. Uh, this is actually this is actually a control panel for the new Panasonic uh, video switcher. Yeah, I was expecting a special name. Okay. <laughs> so there we can see a little live video. It's just a very very short clip. So uh, this is another really great advantage of Virtual Studio. As we can see here, she is standing uh, actually in the virtual set of our innovation center, and this is a really huge area. But actually, in real, on the booth, she was just in a one by two meter, very small green area. So we can have the effect of a very large room. But in real, we have just a very, very tiny area. I think you gave away the answer, but it's OK. <laughs> I did? <laughs> OK. Um, so I um, want to say a few things about the setup, Felix, because I honestly think uh, that setup at IBC it was a success because one meter to two meters is a very limited area. Yeah. But the picture quality that you achieved, that you managed at the end of the day is like amazing. So that was a quite successful setup. Yeah, and we, have to, we also have to think that the setup time we needed for this was just one day because uh, during setup on the exhibition, we could just start with the, with the virtual studio uh, when all the rest of the booth was already finished because this was not the main application on the booth. So this was really a, uh, a good example how simple and easy to set up uh, the system is. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, so also on, uh, on uh, the IBC we presented, we had a, a virtual presentation of the new Panasonic products. And uh, there we designed a product studio 
which was also working in reality. So basically I could be standing right beside this camera now, uh, but we tried to design it as detailed as possible. So yeah, you were really able to zoom with the camera on all the small pins on the backside of the product and everything, or to scale the product really high up and to really point out, okay, this is the HDMI connector and this and this and this. And this is uh, uh, actually we had to visit from, from Epic uh, and they said uh, this are uh, one of the, uh, the uh, highest quality augmented object they have ever seen. So. Uh, very we're really detailed, proud of yeah. this object we made with our partner Mondlicht. Uh, here we can see some more some more details of. Uh, so actually, what we see here is not the real Ravicam. This is just a close-up shot of our augmented reality object. Wow. In reality, so this is actually really in the green screen studio, but not on a real camera, just on an entirely virtual object. So you, yeah, it's very photorealistic to actually do product launches in virtual because there is yeah. no real product there to show, but the augmented exactly. one was realistic enough that they needed, didn't need to hold the cameras and show it. Exactly. It's interesting use of this technology. Okay, let's move on to the Bundeswehr, which is another interesting project. And yes. We are getting the details from first hand right now as well. So we are a little excited. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, as uh, the viewers may know, the Bundeswehr is the German army. And uh, this is not an usual broadcaster, as you might think. Um, but they built a green screen studio. Um, uh, this is a very small studio or we are small to medium size, as you can see in the picture. Uh, in there we used three cameras, all three on uh, CamBot robots and all three Varicams. Um, so this studio is actually meant uh, for testing and getting used to the new technology for the Bundeswehr. Um, yeah, what they want to do it, uh, or what they want to use it for, they want to use it for testing, for training, for their internal communications. Um, actually, they also have a large uh, PR branch. So basically, they have a YouTube channel and so on, which they are producing high quality content for. And they plan to do it in the, in the green now. Um, and uh, immersive news and maneuver, uh, for maneuvers. This is, a, in, in my opinion, funny application. So basically, when you have an army maneuver going on, they want to make something like, okay, we have Team Red and Team Blue, and Team Red and Blue each have their own virtual studio and their colors, and they try to do some fake news along the maneuver. So, okay, the front line moved now so and so and so on to inform the soldiers which are actually in the field during the maneuver. So this is to make the maneuver more immersive. Um, yeah, uh, this is an UHD ready workflow. So uh, basically, uh, as they have varicams, they can they already use the uh, the varicam rock here, which gives a perfect keying result, and they are able to basically with one button uh, push switch from uh, from an HD production to UHD already. So yeah, this okay. funny funny little picture of me standing in the green uh, demonstrating the size of the studio. Felix for scale. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Felix, I actually have a question. So I think very cams are, you know, very nice cameras to utilize reality keyers, uh, some unique features like roll keying. Um, but uh, they are cinematic cameras, right? As yes. Far as I'm, and you should be using the cinematic lenses. Sometimes we get this question, if I use cinematic cameras and cinematic lenses, will my tracking uh, will be as good as the broadcast ones? Is anything different? What is your experience with cinematic cameras and cinematic lenses? Uh, this heavily depends on the type of lens uh, you use. Uh, we like to use the lenses of uh, Canon, which is also one of our partners, and they have a really nice uh, UHD certified uh, lens. It's the CN17 by something. Uh, this is a, a zoom lens which we use. Um, for the Varicam and uh, gives a really, really high quality result and really precise tracking. Um, but uh, actually from some applications, this lens is not wide angled enough. Uh, uh, this is why we have uh, a second um, Canon lens which we use, but this one 
as most cinema lenses, has no lens drive, so no motors to steer them. So we actually, um, uh, together with C-Motion, developed an external lens drive, which is compatible with CamBot and also provides very precise tracking data. So actually we can use any cine lens out there, even if it doesn't have a drive and it will have high quality tracking. Thank you. Okay, uh, do you have any other details to share uh, about the Bundeswehr project? Or um, actually or not, because um, there has not very much happened yet, because they, uh, the project is just okay. done, it's very new, and they just uh, start to uh, produce in there. Actually, it's getting slowed down a bit by the current situation we have worldwide. So this also affects yeah. the German army, actually. So, um, but yeah. um, but uh, I'm, I'm sure we will have some very great results. In yeah, we really appreciate the opportunity to share this project here today because they might not, you know, be ready to announce it. So let's move on with the RWE. Okay, so uh, this is also a very fresh project. Uh, I just, uh, we just finished it last week. Um, RWE is a large uh, German or European-wide uh, energy company, actually. So this is entirely a non-broadcast use. So this is a picture of the actual RWE studio. Um, they have a PTZ-only application, so they only use the Panasonic UE150 PTZ, which does the perfect tracking for them. Um, their green is also uh, mid-sized, as we can see here. Um, Really interesting. Uh, as you might know, uh, a PTZ camera only does uh, pan, tilt and zoom. So basically it's not possible to actually physically move the camera around. But they wanted to be able to have uh, different angles in the studio. Um, so, uh, it was, um, so how uh, the challenge was how to make it work with the tracking. And basically, as you can see here in the picture, very little, we have uh, seven uh, different fixed mounting positions and we have constructed this pedestal for the camera. On the pedestal, there's the camera and also the small screen for the teleprompter. And this pedestal can be uh, very simply mounted in this seven different fixed positions. And all, all those seven positions are via preset uh, calibrated for tracking. So basically for them it's really simple, even when they're on air, they just switch to another camera, quickly move the pedestal, clink it in, and then activate the piece, uh, preset for that position, and then they switch the position of the camera and the tracking is still working, the perspective is matching and everything. I, I observe that you are using the similar lighting at RWE, yeah. the one so, we're having in the Innovation Center. Yeah, so uh, also at Bundeswehr, by the way. Uh, and also okay. on the on the booth at uh, at Panasonic at the IBC. Okay. So uh, because uh, we think this this lighting setup is perfect. Also and it's also working perfectly with the reality Kia. So uh, we export this idea now to all our projects uh, because um, we want to to make uh, to make uh, make it possible to reach smaller budgets and uh, light expensive light technology is something where you can waste very very much of money uh, very very much money and actually for the Kia or for the green screen applications uh, we don't need adjustable lights we don't need to change the color or intensity of the light once it sets up and perfectly working it's fine that's it then we only need maybe a s one or two small spots for highlights but that's it so, yeah, I, I would like to say a few things about lighting because when I visited the Innovation Center, I was uh, honestly impressed because, uh, as the name suggests, the Moscow family was innovating in every area of the studio. Lighting, lighting was one of them. Um, so, you don't need to give some numbers, but um, can you give us a ratio? because i know that these are you know relatively relatively you know very feasible way cheaper solution so uh, what kind of a ratio that you can give us this lighting setup and you know so compared to usual complex uh, studio environments uh, this lighting setup is uh, 10 percent or less 
So this oh. is a huge difference for the. Product. That is why you are exporting this all the way <laughs> to all of Yeah, America. of course. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's working perfect. So there's there's no reason to spend more money on it. I mean, I can tell you, your your key in quality right now it is uh, pretty nice. So what you can expect, I don't know. Uh, we can observe it. I apparently it works. Yeah, let's put Felix in under the spotlight. <laughs> yeah. So here I am. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that's it already. Uh, we spoke about the, the three not usual broadcast uh, projects. Of course, we are uh, doing many more pro real broadcast projects. Uh, so uh, there's a big announcement which is coming uh, in the close future, be uh, future because uh, we convinced a big uh, German broadcaster to, whoops, <laughs> to, uh, to switch to reality. Um, but Actually, the... we talked about the mounted PTZs and the lights, but let's uh, move on to the other bullet points. Okay. I think you were Skype streamings, OB. Ah, yeah. yeah, we forgot that part. Okay, so um, they had the idea to do conferences in there. So uh, they wanted to use Skype or uh, so either Skype or Zoom to uh, to realize that. So basically, people from uh, all the way around the world can connect into the studio and then appear uh, as a screen in the in the virtuality. So basically, uh, we created an I/O solution to uh, get the Skype feed as an SDI signal into uh, reality to use it as an as an um, virtual input. So, um, and also we have a, a connection panel to UB, uh, UB vans, which is also quite unusual for an industrial company. Yeah, but what, what do they plan to use the studio for? Um, actually, it's, it's again somewhat the same as the Bundeswehr uh, project. So they intend to use it for internal training, internal communications and PR. So they want to make some some small tra uh, trailers in there in a nice environment or environment fitting the several different branches of their company and so on. And um, also as this is a huge company with thousands of employees, they have a high demand on uh, internal communications actually. So they, they really want to broadcast internally basically. That's great. Two different company profiles but eventually they want to use this technology for a similar purpose yeah and we see more and more companies uh, wanting to do that um, uh, an interesting addition last point uh, this studio is already in uh, 12g only workflow so this is entirely uhd and they just use uh, 12g um, uh, signals uh, which is also possible with reality with the latest version, obviously. Yeah, I think that's it. If we don't have any more questions regarding the RWE yeah. project. Yeah, as we wrap up, if there are any questions from our audience, don't hesitate to write them in the Q&A section. Well, uh, Felix, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, You're welcome. Three different use cases for this technology which was eventually for a similar purpose for training, internal training, for creating content for YouTube channel, have conferences and get people in through Skype or Zoom uh, for, for PR materials to reach out outside uh, audience or internal employees, they are also audience, which I'm sure created a lot of sparks in the minds of our audience and if they have any questions today or tomorrow don't hesitate to contact us or KST Moscow on this matter. So any final remarks? Honor, let's start with you. Sure, so actually I would like to ask about the nice virtual set that Felix is inside right now. So <laughs> we know that uh, for any media companies or uh, corporates or even uh, defense armies KST Moshkov is able to provide for their technical needs from A to Z. But I, I also know that uh, even your team created this virtual studio or what was the story? And my second question is if a client is in need of some, you know, 
design uh, services, creative services, is KST Moshko able to provide that? Yeah. So basically, uh, we have uh, very strong partners and also our own team for design. Uh, we also do trainings for it in our academy. Um, as you can see, the, the set which I'm standing in, wait, let me go to a wider angle real quick. Um, this is our KST Innovation Center set, uh, which is a quite large, um, large studio application. Um, we actually have a make-off video of it uh, on our YouTube channel. Unfortunately, it's just in German, but uh, just for the looks, it's fine. Um, actually, this uh, is also the set which we uh, give as a starter to all our customers. So they have some, something to start with. And uh, in, that in that quality, we, of course, also design sets as a service for our customers. Thank you. Mm. We have an in, we have a question just came in. Well, with your huge experience, how important would you say is an operator to make sure the key is always perfect? Uh, of course, this question is more to TV broadcasting. What do you think, Felix? How um, important to make how important is to make sure the key is perfect at all times. Uh, this this heavily depends on the the situation. Um, let's say um, if you don't switch much uh, with your light, if you have an ideal setup with the ideal size and color of green, with the with a very fixed light which you never change. Actually, um, as you long as long as you don't want to do any very special magic like reflecting and transparent objects inside, the the um, need of maintaining the key is very little. So actually. Um, this key, which we see here, this was set up, uh, let's say, uh, almost a year ago, and that's it. It has never been adjusted. So um, as long as you have a stable situation, the key is always working perfect once it's adjusted. Um, of course, if you switch the, the talent, the moderator, really often, and if you have a suboptimal situation for the light, or if you want to use several different light sets, you have to adjust every time. Uh, or not every time, but it's possible that you have to adjust it. Is it on the case with reality care? Or would you say this about all, all keyers? Uh, yeah, this is the case for all keyers, um, uh, especially for, uh, for chroma keyers. Yeah? Um, for, for reality keyer, you have, uh, as long as the light situation and the background does not change, you have almost no need to adjusting. Yeah? For other keyers, you have to adjust on the person and so on. Uh, this is not needed with reality Kia actually, um, but uh, reality Kia is a little bit um, sensitive to changes in the light because it does a difference between the background and uh, the real picture. So as soon as you change the light or the iris on the camera, you have to adjust it. But uh, if this is really carefully done, you can have presets for it for every situation and so on. So this is possible, very simple on air. There is a follow-up. There are two follow-up questions on that. So with the reality here, does it also differ uh, when you have different hair colors or the clothes? And what about the talents with different complexions? How can you manage this with reality care? Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is a situation where you have to be careful, of course. Uh, let's say the, uh, the uh, best benchmark for um, for the Kia is to have um, a very, very bright color hair, very bright long hairs, like blonde or white hairs. Uh, this is why we have our, uh, our keying calibration puppet. I, I think it was visible in the video somewhere, uh, where, we have, uh, where we have some very nice blonde and white hairs. And this is actually the most difficult situation you can have. And once the key is adjusted to that, uh, for easier situations, like mine with very short uh, dark hairs, it's really simple. Ah, actually, uh, here uh, we switch to our, uh, our calibration puppet, uh, which is not standing in my room. This is standing in, in Studio A at the moment. But uh, so this is what we use for benchmarking the key, actually. And uh, as, as soon as the key is adjusted to that person, it's fine for the others in most of the cases. Of course, there can be situations where you need to adjust, but mostly you don't have to. Um, I can dive in uh, with another answer to this question. 
We recently, you know, with the lockdown issues and the social distancing, uh, producing live shows became a bit difficult. So in one example with RTBF's weather magazine, the lightning setup has done only once and the show produced 15 uh, sets with the same lighting without changing it. And every day hosts would come in, they would produce the show, it would go live and they would come again another day with the same set of lightings. So I think, uh, yeah, it's very uh, flexible on that part. Yeah, it is, for sure. So this concludes our session, I think. If I will stay a little bit behind to check if there are any more questions or concerns from the audience. But thank you so much, Felix, for joining us today. You're and welcome. The different uh, cases for virtual studio technology. And I'm sure it will inspire uh, some of the people who would imagine having the same products for their yeah. own. I hope so. And uh, if anyone is interested in the workflow, feel happily invited to step by in the innovation center and have a look at it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, our audience, to jo to, for joining us. And Honor, of course, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Many thanks, Felix. You're welcome. Thank you. Let's take a final good look from your studio. <laughs> it looks great. See you. Thank you so much. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.